everyone, students! I am Shiri. And I am Arisa. Today we are going to show you our school and its different facilities. So, so let's, let's go! This is our parade square. This is where we assemble every morning to sing the national anthem and school song on Mondays. We also assemble here on special occasions like National Day. But due to COVID, we have been assembling in our classrooms now. <sighs> but it's okay, things will get better soon. Yes! These are our P1 classrooms. This is where we learn through play every day. Every classroom is decorated with bright murals according to themes. Don't they look beautiful? Yes, I agree. The classrooms provide a conducive environment for us to learn every day. But that's not the only place we learn in school. This is the playroom. We come here for our MMP lessons where we learn important skills. Yes, we even learn how to bake and other life skills. Isn't it awesome? We have three computer labs in our school where we go for our ICT lessons. I love going to the computer lab. Do you know why? I know, aircon! Speaking of aircons, we also have two music rooms that we go for our music lessons every day. Yes, we learn how to play different instruments and how to work together to make beautiful music. <laughs> we also have a special art room where we go for our art lessons every day. I love going to the art room where I can draw and paint. Okay, let's go to the canteen where our other friends are waiting for us. Let's go! Hi, I'm Krasna. And I am Lydia. We are going to show you the most important and most favorite part of the whole school. Yes, it is the canteen. We come here for recess every day. There are a total of 8 stalls here. Stall 1 and 8 sells drinks, snacks and food. While stall 2, 3 and 4 sells Muslim food. Stall 5, 6 and 7 sell Chinese food such as chicken rice noodles and mixed rice. We also have a stage. Sometimes during recess, we will see slideshows and performance by students. The workshop is also in the canteen. We can come here to buy stationery and books from the friendly bookshop seller if you want. This is our school field. We come here for PE lessons sometimes. Yes, during TJF and special occasions like the sports carnival. We also will come here to run and play with our friends. I love playing in the field. Me too is my second favorite place in the whole school after the canteen. This is the extra. We have our lessons here sometimes. This is one of the special rooms in our school. We use it for dance and music lessons. Let's go. This is the general office. The principal, vice principals and office staff will be here. If we need help, the office staff are always available to assist us. It is an important place as we can come here to report any loss or found items also. Yes, if we need help, we can come here. The staff are very nice. This is our beautiful story house where books come to life. We can come here during our English lessons with our teachers or during recess to borrow books. There are also reading corners where you can sit to read our favourite books. And of course, we have our friendly librarian to help us to borrow and return books. This is the Art Fusion. We hold special ceremonies or events here. We use the Art Fusion for level ceremonies or performance. Sometimes our parents won't just perform. Now we have seen all the fun and exciting places in our school, we hope you are ready to explore your new school for the next six years. Remember, if you need help, just 
us one of us, we, we will be happy to show you around the school. We can't wait to welcome you to our school in 2021. See you soon! Yes, see you in January 2021. I can guarantee you that we are going to have so much fun. Learning to play! Good afternoon, parents and guardians. I am Mrs. Shahu, the principal of Evergreen Primary School. Welcome to our Primary 1 E orientation. This is really the first of its kind that we're doing on an E platform. Normally, on this day, uh, in every other year, we will get the parents and the children to the school. And I'll be addressing you and of course my team of HODs uh, would be explaining certain things uh, to you clearly what's going to happen on the orientation week and we will meet your children. Uh, but it's just unfortunate that this year we're not able to meet you face to face uh, but we thought that we would engage you on this e-platform so that at least um, you have a certain sensing of what it means uh, to be at Evergreen Primary School and also um, what it will look like on uh, week one of the orientation. Let's look at the agenda for today. I'm sure before this, you heard the experiences of our lower block students, especially our primary one who shared what was it like to be at primary one. Um, during my address, I'll be sharing on our evergreen primary one journey, after which my vice principal, Mrs. Perlin Wai, will be taking us through the logistics and safety briefing uh, please pay attention to this, especially with the safety uh, measurement, uh, management measures that we have to put in place, uh, even in January uh, 2021. Um, we will have a quick sharing on our PSG. And of course, you would want to hear from our Primary 1 Assistant Year Head, Ms. Corrie Chung, on what to anticipate. Before I begin, I think it's important that I share a little bit about myself so that looking at my journey, you would know how it has shaped my values and my principles about education. I started my journey in 1989, which means that at present, I've been in the service for nearly 30 years, working at uh, secondary schools. Um, I had a stint also writing curriculum at MOE, after which I went to pursue my master's in New York. Um, I had a stint as a vice principal in, uh, uh, in Chaonan, after that, my first stint as a principal at Sengkang Primary, where I was there for seven years, and I came to Evergreen Primary in January 2017. A little bit by myself in, in my career. Um, if you look at it, uh, there are some milestones that have been really uh, their peak in my life, which have shaped in the way I have looked at education too. One of which when I won the President's Award for Teachers, uh, it gave me credibility and not only that, it gave me a lot of assurance that when I try innovative programs or something new, it has always been endorsed by MOE. And if you look at 20, uh, this year, 2020, I received the Long Service Award for 30 years actually. My Vice Principals, Mrs. Perlin Wai and Mr. Yong, uh, both of them, uh, interestingly, are also from secondary schools just like me um, and we have been posted to a primary so which means that we are we understand fully the 10 years of spectrum of what it looks like when a child enters the primary one and leaves with the O levels or N level uh, at the end of 10 years we understand the entire spectrum now in our school we are, we look at the way we structure um, the entire uh, organization that is of course at the school level we have our school leaders, principal and uh, vice principals. Um, they would, uh, we would be helped by our head of departments of uh, the various departments, uh, whether it is the IP subjects like uh, English, math, sciences, mother tongue, and then we have our PE, aesthetics and uh, character citizenship education, uh, who in turn will be helped by our year heads. Now, um, in our school, just like uh, other schools, we run our uh, all programs and we look at student development through a year head system which means that we have assistant year head for every level and year heads at every block that means p1 p2 is a lower block p3 p4 is our middle block and five and six is our upper block 
And of course, we have the class uh, where there are uh, form teachers. We have at minimum two form teachers for every class to attend to the students' needs. My key personnel, uh, please just take a look at them. I don't want to go individually. We have heads of department for every area. The school staff developer uh, will look into staff development matters. Um, HOD Student Development and Wellbeing, Mrs. Tracy Lee is the one who will look at every aspect of student development and well-being. This includes students with special needs, um, those who need financial assistance, um, you know, and uh, all kinds of other uh, needs and well-being of students. She will be the one who will oversee. And of course, all the various heads in charge of the IP areas. And also, we have our subject heads helping my HOD. So you can take a look at all of them. Uh, they will be on the website too. So if you need to speak with anybody specifically, you can, get a sec uh, you can assess their email address and uh, you can directly contact them. Um, also, we have what I've just mentioned, the AYHs, the assistant year heads and year heads. So for you, um, definitely your interest would be on the assistant year head primary one, Miss Cory Chung. She's young, but uh, definitely a very, very good classroom teacher. Uh, um, who can lead the level very well. So she's someone whom you will want to connect with beyond the form teachers of the respective classes. Um, these are our primary one form teachers. Every class will have uh, at least two form teachers whom you can uh, refer to. One care um, would be Mrs. Tina Eng and Madam Mooch. One charity, Madam Haida and Miss Trixie Wang. One faith, Madam Hanim and Madam Tan, Wan Grace, Ms. Corrie Chung, and Madam uh, Chong Shu Pao. Uh, and uh, for One Hope, uh, Mrs. Vanessa Lo, and Ms. Adila. Wan Joy, Ms. Ang Pei Yi, Mr. Kamaru. Um, One Love, Madam Nurul Huda, Madam Liu Tan Tan. Now, our form teachers are really, we have uh, specifically uh, selected them because to be a form teacher of primary one class you need lots of patience and uh, being a, uh, the teachers must be able to connect with the young students so we specifically handpick our teachers now students who have the who have some special needs and who need help we also have our learning support coordinator which is lsp for short lsc for short sorry for english would be madam mooch and uh, lsm that means support uh, for math would be Mrs. Nisa Belford. Um, so these are the form teachers you would need to connect. Now, at this point, I want to mention to the parents, in case there must be, there are movement of teachers, we may change their form teachers. Um, however, at this point of time, uh, these are the form teachers that you can connect with. Now, um, parents, I am sure now you will be wondering you know, you'll be very anxious about your child. What does it take for my child to go to a primary one? You know, will they be okay? Will he or she be uncomfortable or, or will she be able to handle? Must I connect with the teachers for every single thing? Now, I want you to pause and reflect a little. When were the times that you were very anxious? I'm sure you're very anxious when your child was learning to take the first step. I am sure you were anxious when your child was learning to speak. I am sure you were very anxious when your child was able to do the task independently. I am sure when your child started to read a book, you were also anxious. So likewise, it is very natural that your child is coming to primary one, you are going to be very anxious and a bit maybe uncomfortable. Will you be a good parent? Um, how often must you lend your hand uh, and support the child? Um, as you look at the journey, I do not want us to think that it's only about primary one. I would like us to think about the journey as the entire primary, for the six years, a primary school journey. What is it that you would like your child to become at the end of primary six? I want us to visualize that end in mind, right? Rather than what my child needs for primary one. Because the entire thing is that for both teachers and parents, we want our child to grow. We want our child to develop the right attitudes. We want our child to have the right values so that as they grow, 
whether it's cognitively, academically, their character is also developed alongside for the six years. So it's very important that you understand the journey and how we can work as a partner, the school and the home. We are not on the op opposing sides of the field. We're actually on the same side. So we have to work hand in hand so that the support that we give the children, uh, we want to balance uh, doing everything for them, but we want them to learn how to do things for themselves. So we have to be on the same page so that the child will be able to develop independently and be able to think for himself and know what is right and what is wrong. So what is the Evergreen story? When you chose um, Evergreen Primary, uh, what is it in store for your child? No doubt every school is a good school, but there's something very unique about every individual school. So let me take you through what your child stands to gain at Evergreen Primary. Now, we believe very, very strongly that educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. We strongly believe in that because while the mind can be sharpened and, and the child can learn the English and math and sciences, but if you don't educate the heart, he will, he will not be able to uh, socially uh, be adept in, you know, uh, in learning about different people, managing his emotions and uh, having empathy and having the resilience uh, when he faces challenges. So to us, we focus a lot about both sides of it, the mind and the heart. Now, so it's so surprising that our mission is P-L-A-Y, positivity in relationship. In everything that we do, it starts in having good relationships. L, learning with passion. A, we want every child to be able to contribute actively and not to be a, a, a bystander and just observe without participating. And we want the children, every child, to have youthfulness in living, including our staff. First of all, we must love life. Then would we want to learn how to live. Now, our values are respect, Empathy, empathy is about understanding another person from their shoes. Graciousness, to be able to do their part and to have courtesy and respect. Grit, when the challenges are tough, how do they try to overcome? And truth in everything, integrity in both action and in their speech. Now, um, our uh, former uh, DPM, Mr. Dharman uh, Shanmugaratna mentioned, the science tells us that having the time and space for your mind to wander when you are young is critical in developing creative abilities. We need to provide a diversity of experiences for children as they grow up outside of classrooms. Now, the COVID situation especially have shown us that there is no such thing as normal anymore. In fact, we have been told we can't even coin the word new normal. They may not be a normal at all. So all the more, how do we teach our young from children to, to be very flexible and adaptable and have a range of abilities and interests so that they're able to switch, they're able to be flexible and adaptable in everything that they do. That is something that we have uh, been very mindful uh, at Evergreen since 2018. So if you look at our program uh, in a nutshell, number one, you will see two, two words very strong. We give our students lots of choices and a voice. And this is very important because we cannot assume that the, ch the child comes to a school on a blank slate. He does not have any preference or he, everything has to be uh, chosen for him by his parents or teachers. Children can think, children can make choices. So in our school, we give a lot of importance to that. Our curriculum is very differentiated because we know that the readiness level of children are different. We have varied experiences from aesthetic sports, languages and a lot of other things so that the students, when they leave six years, all the students will have different experiences. And this is not only for some, but for all. We provide leadership opportunities for every child, whether as a class leader, um, at a, as a CCA leader, um, as an English language leader, 
or a VIA leader, a Values in Action leader. So we provide lots of leadership opportunities for our students and for them to explore their learning beyond the classroom. So if you look at our PLAY approach, it is done through four areas. Play through the arts and sports, play through the languages, both English and mother tongue languages, play through the math and sciences, and play through character building. Because we feel that when the children have very joyful and meaningful activities, and there's opportunities for them to be curious and to be able to be creative, and for uh, platforms provided for social interaction, now that actually defines play. And we provide all these opportunities so that our students will grow holistically. So in a, in a very quick snapshot of what our multi-modular program, which is our signature program unique to Evergreen, these are the things that you can and your child can look forward to in their six years at Evergreen. So if you look at um, term one in primary one, we teach them uh, really intentionally self-management and social skills. We don't leave it to just incidentally. We actually teach them intentionally. And every child goes through a hip-hop dance because we feel that with dance and movement, children tend to be more comfortable with their bodies and they're able to uh, you know, have a sense of uh, what is it rhythm and you know, what is it to be able to... Um, sort of like uh, an outlet for their emotions in a more, uh, in, a, in, a, in a very co uh, constructive manner. So dance is one of the platform that we will teach the students. And uh, every child uh, at Evergreen in the six years, every year will get to perform on stage every year. And this is something that we hold very dear to our hearts. Of course, in 2020, our students can, could not go on stage. But nonetheless, um, as a class, they performed and we have uploaded their videos so the parents can perform. Hopefully next year, when the situation is better, we will invite parents to come in and watch how much your child has grown in that year through our performances. And of course, if you look at this uh, overview, you can see at P2 to P6, the range of activities that we have provided for our students. In all, every child stands to gain about 16 to 17 varied modules at Evergreen over the six years, every child. Now, another signature program um, at Evergreen is TGIF. That's great, it's Friday. If you ask any child at Evergreen, what do you enjoy most? I am very sure nine out of 10 will tell you TGIF. And it's not just about, oh, that's great, it's Friday. Now, what do we do actually? We, we actually have uh, programs, uh, one hour of play time every Friday, which is owned by every department uh, over the uh, eight months. Now, what happens for this one hour is we have lots and lots of very interesting, innovative and engaging activities, which are actually an extension of their curriculum so that their students get to play with this, uh, whatever they have learned in the classroom uh, outside in a very, very fun way. And some of them are integrated like math and science or math and English or arts and science. So the students have a choice of which booth they want to go to and play on their own with no one uh, forcing them to, to go to any booth. So a lot of choices is provided for the children. Now, what we have seen over the months is that our children become very self-directed uh, when we give them choices of what they want to uh, play with and enjoy. They also start to self-regulate and manage themselves, uh, whether it is uh, the way they behave, uh, manage their uh, emotions also, because sometimes it, you have to be patient to get to a booth. Um, we see them having that kind of self-regulation. And we have also witnessed the older children taking care of the younger ones. So a lot of uh, character building um, is seen through this TGIF, which I'm sure um, if you join our PSG, you will be able to experience it firsthand. All right. Now, how do you prepare your child for primary one? Right. I'm sure there are a lot of things that you will need to take note of. So I'm going to share a very quick 
a brief overview of what to expect at primary one. Okay, um, so first of all is the overview I'll be uh, taking you through how to prepare. Um, what is it like in school? Because uh, if this is your first child, I'm sure you would realize that it's so different from the times that you were in primary one, right? And about transiting to primary one from preschool, because some things we need to let go, it will not be the same as preschool. And what's in it for me as a parent? So these are things I'm going to take us through very quickly. Right, we must understand that primary education is the formative years and it has to be done very well, deepen and also to give them the breath so that they are stronger uh, and this, uh, how strong they are will help them to transit also to a secondary school after the six years. So it is really their formative years and they are early stages of learning. So instead of quickly, um, uh, what do you call, categorizing them and saying that you're good at this and good at that, what we need to do is that we need to give them lots of opportunities for them to discover their talents and abilities. Some children discover it very early at primary one. Some children only discover their talents maybe at primary four. And we must give them that allowance and uh, really help them to grow and understand where their talents and abilities are. So I hope even at home, parents, you would be patient and understanding to allow them to discover it themselves. So preparing for school, very important that both school and home, we want to provide a very structured and supportive environment. Now children need structures. They need a timetable. They need a disciplined environment to grow in their formative years because I want us to pause and think of it like a, a building. If you don't lay a strong foundation for the building, as you layer and layer the building, the building can collapse. So that's why laying a strong foundation is extremely important. I hope you understand why we are sometimes very firm with our rules and uh, 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 we, uh, the need for orderliness, uh, whether it's the way they, they, um, they move from one place to another, um, the way they have to pack their own bags and bring to class, the way we expect need work when they are writing. Now, all this needs to be established very clearly from day one at primary one. Because if we allow it to be, uh, you know, anyhow, then we are going to struggle as the child goes to primary two and above. So I hope you understand why we are firm with such things. Now, we also want to provide greater support for students with special educational needs. So I hope as parents, if we hear of your, our, your children saying, hey, so-and-so is in my class and sometimes uh, the child has a meltdown or the child needs other people's help to do some things, uh, I hope we are understanding because school is a mini society. It is where the child learns that you need empathy for people who have other needs whether it is other educational needs, special needs, financial needs, or academic needs, every one of us must step up and help because these are the people in our society. So I hope at home too, you would help us um, you know, uh, develop your child with all this empathy too and respect. So what is it like in school? Now, um, we are, as a sister, I'm not sure whether you have been uh, in touch, especially if your child is the first child. We are, as a system, moving away from overemphasis on grades with the revised PSLE scoring. So it's no more T-score because T-score is precision to the grade. We're looking at achievement levels. I'm sure at P1, you don't want to be troubled by all of these things. But the good news is we don't have to go for run after the last mark. Uh, students are banded uh, in a, uh, we call it the AL achievement level, which has range of marks. So um, also we want to strengthen the efforts to nurture well-rounded individuals. So if you look at primary one, primary two, we do not have exams. Yeah. So that gives us more space uh, to get the children to explore a lot of active learning uh, and give them lots of time for reading and performances and also to learn the arts uh, and sports so that um, they develop themselves holistically. Now, um, communication. 
So, of course, our main uh, way we like to communicate um, uh, with parents would be parent gateway. Uh, that's the best way. And with COVID, we realized that that's the most effective and efficient way to communicate because when you're on Parents Gateway, you get all the notification on your mobile phone, uh, even when you're away from the desk or you're not at home. Uh, gone were the days where you have to come back home and then get the physical letter or notification from the school, which can be troublesome. So uh, please do sign on a Parent Gateway because you'll be notified very uh, timely. Uh, the other form of communication which is very important would certainly be the student's diary. Now, the diary is not just to pen down the homework. The diary also gives you a lot of information about the school, which I think is important because uh, not only is your child part of our life now, so are you. So I think it's important for us to familiarize ourselves with what is in, in the student's diary. And definitely, if you want to um, pen down a note for the teacher, do write it in the diary and I'm sure the teacher would uh, pick it up. Uh, do inform your child to inform the teacher so the teacher would be able to read the message and respond accordingly. Now, um, when you give a phone call to our general office, please do leave your name, uh, your number and which level your, your child is so that we know which form teacher should call you back. Um, do um, I seek your understanding. Sometimes our teachers in the afternoon, they would be having remedial or CCAs or sometimes they are uh, having workshops. Um, so we may not be able to call you the very day, uh, maybe the next day. But if it's extremely urgent, do let my uh, general office know so that if a form teacher can't call you back, the next level of person who will step in would be the year head. Uh, if not the year ahead, then the um, HOD of Student Development and Wellbeing, now in that hierarchy, we move out. Uh, do not worry that everything has to come to the principal. If not, it's not taken seriously. Uh, not true. Uh, even if it goes to the form teachers or the year ahead, we are always updated. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, you can always email us too. The teacher's email addresses are uh, on our school website. Um, if you really want to have the face-to-face -face meeting with our teachers, uh, please note it's only with appointment. Um, do not just uh, come down because our teachers would be uh, teaching other levels. And sometimes if it's just one free period for the day, it's not fair for them to meet you because then they don't have time to, uh, to rest or to have their meals. So if you have an appointment, that would be so much better. Especially now with uh, our safe management measures, uh, we need to know who's stepping into the school. Now, the last point is extremely important. Whether it is the school or the parents, remember we are both on the same side to help the child. And uh, it's n we need to seek to understand each other and not about proving who is right or wrong. I don't think that's going to solve the issue because at the end, we want our child to be happy and fully engaged in school and safe. So, um, you know, we want to seek to understand where the other is coming from. And also give us an opportunity if indeed um, we have overlooked something, it was never intentional and your feedback is important to us to also grow. So um, let's be respectful um, so that our child who is watching us will also learn how to deal with problems and challenges. Uh, we don't want to be angry and, and passing uh, disrespectful remarks whether it's in school or at home because the child is going to learn from us. So I really need your help on that. So your child is ready for school. Are you? Now, um, we will meet you uh, on, uh, uh, at the end of one month because uh, then the child would have enough experiences. Um, we will want to take you through uh, more in depth about what to look up for in terms of curriculum. Uh, very important is the holistic assessment because there's a portfolio we would need you to understand uh, what it means to look into the portfolio because there are no exams um, and how you can be involved in the child's learning journey, whether it's through the parent support group joining it or come down for our TGIF or um, at home, how can you support your child? So that one, we'll be talking to you in depth, uh, most likely on the 29th of Jan 2021. If there are changes through the parent's gateway, we will inform you. So at this point, I will not be able to comment. Is it a, a physically you walk into the school for this? Uh, because we will take cue from our government about the safety management measures. Uh, if not, it will be on the webinar, Zoom. 
All right. Last but not least, parents, you hold one hand of the child, will be holding the other. And together, may we give children the roots to grow and the wings to fly. We want to support them. At the same time, we don't want to curb them and remove their wings. So let's listen to them, let's grow them, and let's partner each other in their journey. I welcome you once again to Evergreen Primary School and may your child have a very joyful learning experience at Evergreen. Have a great weekend ahead.
Good afternoon, parents. I'm Mrs. Berlin Wai, Vice Principal of Evergreen Primary. So today, I will share with you some information about this school. This year, first day of school is on the 4th January 2021. Okay, in view of COVID-19 situations, okay, special arrangement will be made for this year. All P1 students are to report to their classrooms between 8 to 8.30 a.m. I'm so sorry, parents will not be allowed into the school. So we seek your understanding okay, that to follow our SMM measures okay, that we have put in place to ensure the safety of all our students. So on the first day of school, okay, parents can drop your child okay, at gate 1, okay, which is at the security post between 8 to 8.30. Teachers and prefects will be there to bring your child to his or her classroom. On other days, okay, parents are allowed to drive into the school for students to alight at the car porch in the morning before 7.25. Do drive slowly and carefully okay, and do also make sure that your child has his or her bag ready before reaching the car porch. This is to ensure that it is done in a fast and safe manner. For our dismissal arrangement, students will be given coloured stickers for easy identification of dismissal pattern. So for example, if your child is leaving from gate 1 okay, or the front gate near the security post, your child will receive an orange sticker. So if your child is taking the bus, school bus, Okay, you will be given a blue sticker. Okay, if the child is going back by gate 4, okay, at the back, it will be given a green sticker. And if your child is staying in the school okay, under the care of Big Heart Student Care Centre, your child will be given a yellow sticker. Parents are required to inform the form teachers of any changes so as to avoid any confusion. So our school has put in place different safe management measures, SMM. Okay, this is as at 4th November 2020. So we, fold, we take reference from the national posture. So any change okay, we may make in November and December, we will update parents through Parents Gateway. So the SMM in schools, all students and staff will be required to wear masks at all times, okay, and masks can be taken down okay, during snack break okay, as well as recess. There will be daily temperature taking in class in the morning okay, as well as in the afternoon if the child is staying back. There will be fixed seating in the classrooms and in the canteen. Wipe down routine in class okay, before the start of the lesson and after mother tongue periods. Okay, the students will be required to wash their hands before and after meals. And of course, after they have finished their meals, they are supposed to clean up the area after them okay, through a wipe down routine. So for daily temperature taking, okay, every morning students will take their temperature okay, at 7.30 okay, and 2 p.m. if they are in school for the afternoon program. They are expected to bring with him his or her a working thermometer every day and all P1s will be given a new thermometer on the first day of school. So if the child has a trigger temperature of 38 degrees, okay, uh, parents will be called in and the child will be arranged to be sent home. Okay, the well-being of our students is utmost important. If your child is unwell, please bring your child to see a doctor and rest at home. If any of your family members think that the same household are unwell, that is diagnosed with acute respiratory infection and or asked to take a swab test, please inform your child's form teacher okay, and your child will be granted approved absence okay, AA if family member is above 18 okay, or absent with valid reason if the family member is under 18. This is in line with MOE's policy to safeguard the, the well-being of our students. Okay, other matters. Okay, if your child sustained minor injury in school, okay, a trained first aid staff will attend to your child. 
we will contact you if we assess that further medical attention is needed for your child's injury. Okay, if your child has a temperature of more than 8, 38 degrees, you are required to bring him or her to the doctor. Parents must sign your child out at the security post before bringing your child home. In an emergency, an ambulance will be called and parents will be informed that the ambulance was called and will meet your child in the hospital. Okay, this is on snack break and recess. Okay, prior to COVID-19, okay, we have three recesses for six levels. Okay, in view of COVID-19 and to avoid intermingling across levels, we have staggered recesses for the different levels. So for primary one, okay, we have arranged for snack break to be at 9 a.m. Okay, in the class. And recess will be at 11 a.m. Okay, you may be concerned of the late recess. So our suggestion okay, is to get your child to eat something before coming to school. Okay, pack healthy snacks okay, for your child, for example, sandwiches, fruits or healthy biscuits to be taken during the snack break in class. Okay, during recess, your child will have an option okay, to buy the kind of food that they like okay, from the canteen. On food safety as well, the school will not be allowing individual birthday celebrations in class or at the canteen where food is involved. This includes giving out of goodie bags. As a class, the form teachers will be singing a birthday song with the class for the students celebrating their birthdays for the month. To acknowledge the students' birthdays and for their friends to give them opportunities to wish each other well. Another important note, okay, in view of safe management measures in school, this year the sale of books and uniform can be done online or purchased on-site. So the 23rd, 24th and 25th November has been set aside for P1 parents to purchase their books or uniform in schools if they wish to. So if you have applied for financial assistance scheme, okay, please do not purchase anything from the bookshop or uniform yet. You will be informed of your application outcome by the 15th of December 2020. Parents who have indicated interest in the student care services or school bus service, you will hear from the service vendor by 15 November 2020. So thank you parents, okay, we will continue to work hand in hand and next okay, uh, we will have Mrs Tracy Lee to share with you on our parent support group. Good afternoon parents, I'm Mrs Tracy Lee, HOD for Student Development and Wellbeing. Today I'm going to share with you how we can work hand in hand together through our parent support group. So what are the benefits of joining the PSG? For parents, it is definitely a good opportunity to be closer to your children. And that will give you that platform to you know, observe them in school and to understand them better. Now this will also provide you with a platform for you to collaborate with the teachers and work closely with them. And some examples of uh, PSG activities, um, parents uh, usually you will be invited you know, into the school during learning journeys, uh, school events uh, and celebrations, you know, uh, for example, Total Defense Day or even Children's Day or even Teacher's Day uh, to actually help out with the decoration or even the activities that was planned for that day. Um, we also have activities like parents, parenting talks and also uh, parent-child bonding activities. So how to join the Evergreen Primary School PSG? So um, you, a registration form will be sent to you via the Parents Gateway. And uh, once you have uh, received the link, all you have to do is to sign up and submit the form. And more details will be given to you because uh, that's where the team will come together to plan the first meeting for our parents. Right, so we want to encourage you to come and join us um, and we look forward to seeing you in 2021. Thank you. Hi, I'm Miss Chong. I'm P1AYH for next year. Let me share with you more about what to expect for the first three days of orientation. 
Okay, so for the first day of orientation, this is the list of programs that the teachers will be running through with the students. Uh, parents, please do not worry about the list of books for the students to bring. They will be given a list of books to bring for collection on the second and third day of school by their form teachers. We will be going through these programs on the second day of orientation and the third day of orientation. The timetable will commence on the fourth and fifth days of school. Okay, so we have these following special arrangements for the first three days of school. So the students will have their snack break, known as eat with your teacher break time, at from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. in their own classrooms. And then they will proceed for recess at 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. for one care, one charity and one faith. And the next four classes, one grace, one hope, one joy and one love, will go for recess from 11.30 to 12. So on the first day of school, which is 4th January, on Monday, all P1 students will report at their classrooms between 8am to 8.30am. Due to the COVID-19 situation, we hope that you understand that um, parents will not be allowed in school due to the safe management measures put in place to ensure the safety of all our students in the school. Parents, you may drop your child off at gate 1 between 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Form teachers and prefects will be there to bring your child to their classrooms. This will be the dismissal arrangements. So the classes will be lined up according to the following dismissal pattern and they will be brought to the gate 1, gate 4 and bus bay. In the event of wet weather, students will be dismissed in a staggered manner. We seek your cooperation and understanding that you'll be punctual in picking up your child so as to avoid unnecessary anxiety for your child. Students will be dismissed class by class from their classrooms at 1pm for the first month of school in January at their respective dismissal points that you have indicated. Students who are taking the school bus will be put in a separate room until 1.25pm and they will be brought to the bus bay by the teachers. From 1st February onwards, students will be dismissed at 1.30pm at their respective dismissal points. So, do take note of these following timings. We will start school from 8 to 8.30am only on the first day of school and from the second day of school onwards, we will be starting at 7.30am. Snack break will be subsumed into lessons. The duration of snack breaks will be 10 minutes. Will be any time between 8.45 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. Recess time for P1 students will be at 11 a.m. from Monday to Thursdays. And on Fridays, we'll be having TGIF, which is short for that's great is Friday. It will be from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And for School dismissal for the first month of January, it will be at 1pm. From February onwards, students will be dismissed at 1.30pm. All students will be carrying out the wipe down routines in class. So they will be doing it at the start of the day or when there's a change of classrooms during mother tongue. And the students will be cleaning both their tabletops and their chairs. They will also be carrying out this wipe down routine in a canteen. They will do it before and after eating. And similarly, they will also clean their tabletops and chairs allocated. Dear parents, we have come to the end of the presentation for our P1E orientation. Please scan the QR code or click on the link and post any questions that you might have on the Padlet. Thank you for viewing. See you soon.